Hey guys, it's Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. Well, today it's the IRS currently non-collectible status, a way to potentially not pay any of your IRS tax debt. Stay tuned. All right, so as someone that owes the IRS back taxes, there's essentially four ways to resolve your taxes. Number one, the most obvious, pay the amount in full. Number two is get on a payment plan. There's various types of ways to do this. Nonetheless, start paying this off periodically on a monthly basis. Number three is what we call an IRS offer and compromise, or better known as like a settlement with the IRS. You've probably heard these commercials before, settle pennies on the dollar and such like that. Not easy to do. Nonetheless, I've done lots of videos on the channel on how these things work, uh, cases where I've actually gotten these things accepted uh, actual forms we filed be sure to check out the channel on that number four is the iris currently non-collectible all right so what is the iris currently non-collectible status it's just as it sounds the iris will not collect on you they're not going to garnish your wages they won't levy your bank account they can place a lien on you now this doesn't actually absolve all the taxes on your account they are still there they will continue to accrue interest and penalties, but the IRS is not gonna collect on you. What it also does is it allows the 10 year statute to continue to run. More on that in a bit. So how do you qualify for a currently non-collectible status? You have to have no available equity in your assets and currently your allowable living expenses has to be more than your current income. All right, so you might be asking, why would I get on a non-collectible status if it doesn't actually absolve my tax debt? Well, there's really like four reasons for this. First and foremost, if you remember what I said earlier in that this currently non-collectible status allows the 10 year statute to run, this is like the big one here, okay? So if we're close to that C said date or collection statute expiration date, I got a video on explaining what this is, but essentially it's the 10 years that the IRS has to collect on your debt. If we're close to that expiring, then maybe a good strategy is to get on a currently non-collectible status to potentially hold that until that 10 year statute date runs. If the statute day runs, all your taxes get wiped out. So that's potentially why we would get on a currently non-collectible status. Number two is you would say maybe we shouldn't, why would we get on a currently non-collectible status if maybe we qualify for an offer and compromise? Well, one of the key things that may get an offer rejected is something called dissipated assets. You essentially got rid of your assets within the last three years before you filed an offer to qualify for the offer. Maybe you gave money, all your money to your daughter. And you're like, oh, now I can qualify for an offer. The IRS is gonna say, no, that should have uh, got paid for your tax debt. You're not gonna qualify for an offer. So maybe what we can do is get on a non-collectible status until that three years uh, goes by where you got rid of those assets and then qualify for an offer. Number three, we get on a currently non-collectible status because potentially you're not in compliance uh, with taxes, i.e. you haven't filed all your tax returns. In order to get on a payment plan or an offer and compromise with the IRS, you have to be compliant with your taxes, i.e. file all your missing returns. So if you need some time to get your records together in order to file those missing returns, a currently non-collectible status is a good option. Another reason why maybe we would get on a non-collectible status is maybe you qualify for an offer and compromise, but you haven't made all your obligations for tax payments. One of the big things to qualify for an offer and compromise is that, hey, you're gonna be paying your taxes moving forward. So you have to make quarterly tax payments or you gotta withhold properly on your wages. Now, if you didn't do that this year, then maybe we get on a non-collectible status until you can start making those payments. All right, so maybe you determine, hey, the CNC or currently non-collectible status is a good option for me. How do I get on this? All right, so you can either get on this by actually filling out and filing a 433F like you see here on the screen or the 433A, it's kind of the same thing, okay? Or you give the IRS a call 
to the collections line. I'll include that phone number in the description below. And you kind of go over the 433A or F with them over the phone. Now, I would recommend that, yeah, you give them a call and you do it over the phone. Once you get off the phone, you should be able to know that you got on the non-collectible status or not. So that's why I would say you give them a call. But be sure you fill out these forms first before you give them a call. So when they kind of go over these things, you already know what to say. Uh, be sure to use also this uh, collection financial standards page here uh, to help you fill out the allowable living expenses, right? IRS allowed the, this part here or the 433A if we take a look right here, right? The expenses are on this side right here. Okay, make sure you use this, this page here to know kind of how much you can uh, input into that expenses that can help you qualify for the non-collectible status or not. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Please subscribe, like the video, share this with anyone you think it would be helpful for, or in the comment section, uh, throw something in there that you think maybe I can cover at a future date. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much.